Hi, Stacy Murphy here with a quick video on garden harvest bouquets. So this is one of my favorite things to do for myself for a couple of reasons. So I love to make bouquets because number one, I'm bringing all that food out from the garden and into the kitchen and I'm creating beautiful bouquets. So not only is it preserving the food so that I'm, it's ready for me to eat and it's making sure that it stays hydrated and it stays beautiful, um, but also it's kind of food for my soul. I look at my table and it's got bouquets all over it and it warms my heart. And uh, so that's a different kind of nourishment that my food brings to me. So they're gorgeous is one reason why I'm building all these bouquets. And then the second reason is that I'm actually using them to preserve my garden harvest and ensure that I eat everything in a timely manner and it doesn't go bad. What I want you to do is I want you to go outside and I want you to look at uh, colors, textures, uh, heights, and sizes of things and see where things might want to be intermatched, right? So I like to think about things in terms of simple pairings, like I'll keep a simple kind of color palette, like okay, maybe I want to stay in an orange-purple color palette, maybe orange, purple, and white. Maybe I want to stay in like a pink and purple color range, maybe some blue thrown in there. And then I'll go out and I'll see what I can put together into that uh, bouquet that makes sense for that color palette. So another way I could think about it is I could think about texture and I could say okay I want something that's like spiky and I want something else that's soft and then I could put those things together. Um, another way to think about it would be to think about and this is the way a lot of people think about the bouquets is they say okay I'm going to start with the focal piece. So what is the thing that I want people to look at in the bouquet? And so I've got a great example of a of a um, focal point. This one is a very large focal point right? Oh look it's like eating me. Um, so this is a bird of paradise for those of you who aren't familiar. And this is in the garden outside. Uh, very easy to grow. It just grows like crazy. Um, and so that's a really phenomenal focal point. This is hard not to be a focal point in a bouquet, right? The only way to make this not the focal point in the bouquet is to have like 200 of these. And then they all become just background for each other. And it's all just orange, purple, and green. And there's no more focal point. So... Okay, so let's say you know you take a flower and maybe it's your focal point. It doesn't have to be a flower as a focal point. So a lot of people think that there is a focal point and then the rest is kind of filler around it. And a lot of people think of filler as something that's like green. And this is a beautiful dill uh, bouquet or by itself it's a bouquet or it's just a bunch of dill, right? And so this dill could actually be a uh, filler for that flower or it could be its own bouquet, right? Okay, so that's one idea. You put together a bouquet and it's got maybe a focal point and it's got some uh, and it's got some filler around it, right? So that's one way to build a bouquet. You might decide that instead of having just one flower as a focal point, you might have three flowers as a focal point and then some filler around that. So you can take this idea and build on it and you might have, you know, three sunflowers as kind of a main focal point with maybe you have that dill around it and then maybe you have a couple other highlights in there as well. And that could be a really simple bouquet to put together. Another way to build a bouquet, and this is a, a slightly different way to think about it, you could think about what's above the vase and what's below the vase. So you could have a giant jar that's glass and you can see what's in that jar, right? So why not when you harvest your carrots, why not make them the focal point of your of your bouquet. Now, just because you have a whole bunch of filler material doesn't mean you can't make a bouquet. I personally love herbal bouquets. They're fragrant, they're beautiful, and you can just throw together uh, three different types of herbs in, a, in one single container and they're big and they're bushy. And that way they will stay fresh, they'll stay hydrated, and whenever you're ready to cook with them, they're right there on the table for you to use. One of the principles that a lot of floral arrangers use is this idea that things look better in odd numbers. And so oftentimes uh, you can just put together a couple a couple things, just a few things, makes a beautiful bouquet because the three things are just naturally balanced. So here's one idea of a very simple bouquet. It's beautiful and it's just three simple things. Taking that a step further, when you're putting together a big bouquet like this one, Oftentimes you'll see there's one or one or three focal points coming out of the center of the bouquet. 
and then you have the filler around it is composed of let's say seven of one type of flower, three of another type of flower, three of some sort of filler. And you can use fillers like basil as a really good filler. You can use euphorbia if you have that in your garden. So there's lots of different materials that you can use and you're only really limited by your creativity. And just a couple quick tips on how to keep your floor bouquets as long as possible, keep them fresh. Um, so one of the things you wanna do, of course, is you want to get the plants out of the garden. You wanna make sure they're cooled off. So if they're vegetables, you wanna make sure that you hydro cool them and make sure that they all the field heat is out of them. Um, and then if there's anything that has stems that are gonna go into the water and they are flower stems or herb stems, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have a portion of clear stem so that that part goes in the water and this part above where the leaves are is not gonna go in the water. So this is a beautiful piece of lemon catnip. And so what I wanna do is take off any leaves down here and I can dry them and use them for tea or whatever I wanna do. Um, but I want to do that so that this leaf material, if this ends up in the water, you've oftentimes seen water that turns all foggy and, and has, you know, cruddy qualities to it. What that is, is basically uh, the water is taking on sort of bacteria and fungal uh, issues from the plant material. And so you don't want that to happen. You just want the clean stem inside of the water. So you just pull that stuff off and dry it. Um, so that's for things like herbs and flowers especially that have a lot of greenery. Don't use that greenery necessarily as the filler. You can strip that greenery off and use something else as filler that has a more solid stem. So that's one thing that's gonna help keep your bouquet fresh as long as possible. The other thing is to clean out that water periodically. So if you start to see it you know, turn a little foggy, you wanna go in and change that water out, freshen it up, make sure no leaves are in that water, right? So those are two things that are gonna keep your, your bouquets really fresh. And then what I like to do is as uh, things are ready to eat, I like to take them off and eat them and leave everything else in the arrangement and just rearrange it a little bit just to make it look good again. And of course it's gonna help if you start with a clean and sterile container to put your bouquet in. If you start with a container that's got some mud in it, that's got some maybe fungal or bacterial issues with it already, your flowers aren't gonna last as long or your harvest isn't gonna last as long. So you wanna make sure that you clean and sterilize those containers first. You're really only uh, limited by your creativity. So go on, get wild, you know, have a lot of fun look for color, look for texture, look for size, look for shape, and look for interesting ways to put those things together. And remember, there's nothing too weird for a garden bouquet. Just go try it. It's, it's going to be beautiful. All right, so that's it for this video, and I'll see you on the next one.